Today I'd like to look at the topic of continued fractions. And in order to do that, I'm going to remind you of a basic principle. If I have a number a, I can rewrite that as 1 over 1 over a as a division. Uh, that's because we can think of division as inverting and multiplying, so this would be 1 times a over 1, which is a. And at first blush, you might say, why would you want to do this? Well, as we go along with this, you'll see why. And we're going to start out by looking at the number pi. And uh, we're going to try to write pi as what's known as a continued fraction. Uh, first, let's get pi to a certain number of decimal places. And to do that, we'll go to our calculator. And uh, we'll just type in pi. And I get 3.14159265. So that's the value we're going to use for our, our uh, pi approximation that we're going to be working with. So we're starting out with pi accurate to nine decimal places. And what I want to do is rewrite pi as 3 plus that decimal, 0.14159265.4. And then using this principle right here, I'm going to rewrite that decimal as follows. Okay, and that looks like that. And for my next step, what I want to do is take this 1 over the decimal and actually divide it out and see what that turns out to be. So let's go to our calculator to do that. And there's my decimal, and I'll just hit the x to the negative 1 button, which should flip it over, and I get 7.062513306. So let's put that into our worksheet. And there we go. And now I'm going to take that 7 and the decimal, and I'm going to separate them, adding them together. There we go. And if we look at that, we see that pi is about equal to 3 plus 1 over 7 plus a teensy-weensy bit. So if I throw away that teensy-weensy bit, the 0 0.06 and so on, I get pi is approximately equal to 3 plus 1 seventh, which is 22 sevenths, which is one of the uh, rational approximations we use for pi in math classes. So that's a nice illustration of one place that that could come from. But let's go a little further. Let's take that decimal, that 0 0.0625, etc., and rewrite it. Again, we're using this right here, a equals 1 over 1 over a, so I've rewritten the 0 0.0625. And now I'm going to take this fraction there and divide it out. And you can see how easy this is to do on the calculator. You just subtract the 7, which gives me the decimal. And then you hit the x to the negative 1 button and hit Enter. And we get 15.996594441. So let's put that in there. There we go. And now, if I look at that 15 plus 0.9965, that's about 16. So I could say that pi is approximately equal to 3 plus 1 over 7 plus 1 sixteenth. And what I want to do is go to my calculator and evaluate that. And when I do that, I get 3.2. Oh, that's a mistake. Let's try that again. We have 3 plus 1 uh, divided by, and then in parentheses, 7 plus 1 divided by 16. Close up parentheses twice. Enter. And that looks more like it. And I get 3.141592. But that's not what I want. I want to change that to a fraction to see what my fraction was. So I hit the change the fraction button. And I wind up with 355 over 113, which is a better approximation to pi than 22 sevenths. How good an approximation is it? Well, let's put in pi to the degree of accuracy of the calculator. And if you look at, um, at the pi value that the calculator gives me, 3.1415926, and then you look above at what the continued fraction gives me, you can see that we get the 1.141592, and then the 9 is wrong. So we're accurate to 6 decimal places with that approximation. Whereas with the 22 sevens, we're accurate to what? 
about two decimal places. So we get more decimal places the further out we go. And we could continue this process going on and on and on. Uh, we could take the 15.996, write it as 15 plus 0.9965, etc., and do the same procedure we did. And what's going to happen is our fractions are going to get longer, more complex, but every time we do it, we're creating a new rational fraction that's a better and better approximation of pi. And uh, the limit to our accuracy is going to be determined by the number of decimal places that we know pi to, of course. So since our calculator is only giving us uh, nine decimal place accuracy, uh, let's not go any further with this, but let's look at the results that other people have gotten. And here's our result taken down a good bit further than we actually went. You can see there's a pattern to this in the sense that all of our uh, subfractions have one in the numerator. Uh, remember we had taken it to the point where we had the 3 and the 7 and the 15 and then as we go on down uh, we can see the continued fraction for pi and the three dots down at the bottom indicate that it goes on forever. Um, if you wanted to reproduce this uh, in this form, uh, notice the only thing that you really need to know are these numbers, the 3, the 7, the 15, and so on. So frequently when you're writing out these continued fractions for people, you don't write them in the fractional form, you just write those numbers, and that tells the people what goes in each of these, these positions. So when you see a continued fraction written for a particular number, instead of the fraction itself, you'll often see uh, this sort of notation. And what I'd like to do this uh, in our next lesson on this continued fractions part two is we're going to do the same thing with an irrational number, uh, the square root of two, another irrational number. Of course, pi is irrational as well. It's a transcendental irrational number. But we're going to do the same thing with the square root of two and see what's, if, what sort of numbers we get here. You notice with pi right now there's no discernible pattern, although we do notice that it's kind of interesting. We've got a lot of small numbers and then a big number, but nothing that we can look at and say right away that there's a pattern, and we really don't expect that. But uh, square root of 2 is going to give uh, an interesting result, I think. So um, let's call that the end of this lesson, and we'll pick it up with the next one.